Zdravo, Prishindetia, Merhaba. We're in central Skopje. We're doing a food tour. It's food day, guys. So we're gonna start you off at a local market. We're gonna see what they're selling here in Skopje, the capital of Macedonia. And then we're gonna try some Macedonian Balkan food. Let's do it. So we're here in the old bazaar. This is the oldest part of Skopje that still stands. In 1963, there was a massive earthquake that knocked down basically everything in this city. This old part was kind of, you know, started during the, the Ottoman occupation, so it's very Turkic. It feels very interesting. And here, this is the best place to eat in the city besides um, Debar Malo, which is kind of this new kind of cool place with lots of traditional like trattorias and stuff like that. That being said, there's a massive market we're gonna head to uh, and the best part about this place is you've got Macedonians, you've got Bulgarians, you've got uh, Albanians, and you've got the Turks that have been here since the, you know, maybe 500 years. So you've got a nice mixture of things. We're gonna discover what Macedonian food looks like, what it tastes like, what it smells like, what it sounds like? Weird, but we're gonna see it all. The first food on this food tour we're gonna try is Mekitsi. I figured we'd start it off with something that's very Balkan. So I first tried this in Bulgaria. I was in uh, the Rila Monastery and there's this famous little Mekitsi place. Essentially it's the, you know, it's fried dough. They do fried dough everywhere. Uh, you top it sometimes with powdered sugar. You can think of it as the Balkan funnel cake. And these places right here, these are the kind of traditional kind of Balkan bread spots. They've got simit, what you would find in Turkey. They've got burek, they've got uh, piroshka, which come, you know, more from the Slavs. And then you have Mekitsi. It's a huge mix. You find epic food diversity here because of all the different peoples who have called this land home over the past four or 5,000 years. So the question on our minds is, how does this taste? Mmm. Fried dough. Wow. It's crispy. It's spongy. Uh, it's not super greasy, which is nice. And uh, the best part about it is it's not overly sweet, not overly salty. So it's just like that one of those neutral things that you gotta love. There's a lot to see on this tour, so let's keep it rolling. This was 10 dinars, like 20 cents. Mm. Really the cool part about Balkan food is that because you have so many different religions living here and so many cultures living here, you know, the Greeks, the Turks, everyone's been here. You had lots of diversity within the food here. It means you can find pork, which you normally wouldn't be able to, for example, find in Turkey. And it means you can find also Muslim food that you wouldn't be able to find, for example, in like uh, in Austria, for example. You got like a huge mix of Eastern European, of Ottoman, of Balkan, of Greek. Super nice. I wandered past this huge market earlier, so let's see what they got to sell in Skopje. Got like loose leaf tea, dried meats, cheeses, olives. This is the biggest kind of farmer's market that I've found in Skopje so far. You have pretty fair prices for everything. And this is a lot of local vendors selling vegetables, selling uh, different kinds of dried things, canned things, salted things. Um, you can find a lot of similarities to what they sell in Turkey, for example. Um, in what they sell here. Dairy is a super important thing here in the Balkans. They do a lot of sheep, goat, and uh, and cow's cheese, as long as, as well as yogurts and different kinds of products that stem from that. So they do a lot of these like fetas or these kind of like block white cheeses. They do some of these. Uh, this is like a big thing with yogurt and they've got uh, peppers actually in there like marinated and then they do a longer kind of marinated or longer aged cheese calling this Sharsko. Beautiful stuff though. That market is pretty incredible. Such diverse products, a lot of homemade stuff. They do a lot of their own pickles, a lot of their own spreads that you can buy and each guy does his own variety. So I'm sure they have clients that, you know, come back just to that specific guy because they like the way he does his Ivan or the way he does his Kaimak. It's beautiful.
in the old bazaar, you'll find a lot of these kind of old school Ottoman style restaurants. Um, I'm not sure the exact name of them, but you can tell because they all have these grill boxes. So they put the grill out here so you can see what's happening. You can see the same thing over here. And actually they do all the kind of displays like kind of they pop out, which is super cool. But you know, you the whole point is you walk by and you see the delicious stuff that's going on. I mean, this guy is like roasting. I mean, I don't know how you can walk by this and not want to eat stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna eat some stuff. I think we're gonna go in. Look at it. So I'm sitting now at this super traditional Macedonian style skada. Skada means grill. Um, comes from the Turkish word izgada. It's kind of similar to the word they used in Albania as well. Uh, they do grilled meats. You saw them grilling up the meat earlier. And uh, they also are known for doing this uh, kind of like hot pot of beans. So I got that as well with the national salad of the Balkans, the Shopska salad. Uh, it's just like a traditional like Greek salad, you know, uh, that's what we would call it in the US, but you can find it all over the Balkans. Um, and that's kind of the official name. We're gonna try that. We've got my favorite Turkish iron, except they've written it here in Cyrillic, so you can read it. Oh, they also have the normal as well. It's just so mixed here. Like here in Albania, they were calling this dal, which is the same product, but with an Albanian name. Here they prefer the Turkish name, um, or they still use the Ottoman Empire kind of name. So confusing. If you were to ask me what Macedonian food is, it's a really impossible question to answer. It's just such a mix. Is it Greek food, Bulgarian food, Albanian food, Ottoman food, Macedonian food, Serbian food? It's kind of like a conglomeration of all of it. And kind of each individual country does their certain things really well, but overall they all serve the same stuff. Um, so if you're in Bosnia or you're in Greece or you're in Turkey, you're gonna find the same food. Uh, there's gonna be variations, there's gonna be some national pride attached, but uh, yeah, you're gonna get the same kind of stuff. Here what they do really well, they do kind of like eggplant dishes that are kind of, you can often find in jars. One's called lutenitsa, one's called pinjar. These are roasted eggplant dishes with peppers, tomatoes, fava. Wow, beautiful. And we just got our Shopska salad. There it is, look at that. So they grate the uh, the sheep's cheese on top, as opposed to having those like squares that you normally get with a traditional Greek salad. And then you've just got cucumbers, tomatoes, maybe some onion in there. Super, super simple. So the food is here. We've got some traditional, we've got some traditional Macedonian options for you. So we have the Shopska salad as you saw. This is what they're calling Tave Gravse. It's uh, basically the national dish of Macedonia, I believe. And it's a bean stew of sorts. So you guys can see here, got some uh, white beans. It's a little bit different than what we had in the Kumanovo episode, I believe. These are larger beans in there. It's more of a stew. And then here we have uh, kebab, kebabchi, chevapi, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes they're pork, sometimes they're beef. They are basically the national food of the Balkans and of Turkey. Um, they're grilled, they're super delicious, they're pretty cheap. Probably one of these is like 10 dinars, so this is probably, probably this whole thing is like less than $2 per se. And then my favorite part about all Macedonian food is it comes with this bread, which is just absolutely gorgeous. It's like a kind of in between focaccia and pita bread. So super, super tasty, so let's try. This is probably gonna come out to like four to five dollars US. The only thing left to do is give it a shot. So I wanna start with these beans. Very curious. Got a nice, uh, just like a stew. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Oh, those are delicious. Super similar to actually something I've had in Turkey. Uh, they've got this like nice oil on the top. You can taste the garlic, you can taste the onions, and the uh, white beans, they kind of turn into like a puree even, you guys can see here. Look at that, it's beautiful. Mmm. Oh, I really like that. That's awesome. The next part of any good Balkan meal, the chivapi, the kebab. Let's give it a shot. Good stuff. Mmm. Meaty, you get some onion, you get some cumin in there a little bit. You get some, uh, maybe a little piece of onion. It's just, these things are so good, they're so cheap, they're super available, and uh, they're always fresh off the grill. They never give you old ones normally, which is kind of the best part about it, so good. Last but not least, you gotta go for the Shopska. You just get a little bit of everything in there. You get the cheese, you get some onion, you get some uh, tomato, some cucumber. Mm. 
so tasty. Grating the feta really makes like a big deal. It's really the texture of the whole thing changes. It's way better than the block and it kind of incorporates into the the salad itself, so it almost becomes kind of like the sauce um, because it, it's got that acid that typical feta has. Super tasty. All of this, about $5 US. Um, last but not least, the bread. Look at how this, oh, I love this stretch. This is so much gluten in this bread, it's unbelievable. I'm gonna give it a dip in this thing. Oh yeah, dippy dip, and Mm. That you can really not go wrong with. I'm just like in paradise. This is my kind of eat. Okay. Oh, wow. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. It's the end of the day. I thought we would end it with a little bit of dessert. So we've come to a really traditional little dessert shop here in the old in the old bazaar and I've got two dishes to show you dish number one this one called three leche this is a very interesting story which I'll tell you in a second and this is kaimachin which is a kind of probably comes from the Ottoman Empire type dessert kaimak is the cream on top of which you make yogurt um, he heated this up and I believe it's something close to sutlach which is Turkish um, Turkish rice pudding. So if I look under the inside, we've got a, oh, no, it's like a nice, uh, it's like a flan. Look at that, that's beautiful. All right, let's give these a try. The desserts you find here in Macedonia, I don't think are any particularly special to Macedonia. This is the same with the Balkans. You kind of find the same desserts all over the place with a little bit of variation, I will say. So, Kaimachin, here it is, it looks beautiful. Ooh, we got a call to prayer coming up. Ooh, I smell some eggs. This is like an egg custard kind of thing. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Oh. This is the second time I've been making a video that I've been interrupted by the call to prayer. And it's about, it's a bit too loud to explain over it, so you gotta wait. So, the kaimachin. This is, uh, it's flan. It's basically flan, eggy. Not too sweet. The top has a nice bounce to it. It was probably made earlier today. And uh, yeah, overall pretty good. It's like the same kind of flan you would get pretty much anywhere. Pretty good. I give it like a six out of 10. Number two, we'll finish the day on this. This is called Tri Leche. This is theoretically from Albania, but you can find it all over the Balkans as well. This is my favorite story I've ever heard of any food from the Balkans, and here you go. When I saw this cake and when I tried it the first time, I was like, this kind of tastes like tres leches cake from from Amer, from like uh, you know from Mexico. Tres leches cake is a really famous dish from Mexico. It's it's like a white cake that they uh, they basically cook with three milks. They use uh, normal milk. Sometimes they use goat milk, and then they use uh, condensed milk, or sometimes they use evaporated milk. Totally depends. And you can find tres leches in Spain and Portugal. You can find it in pretty much every country in South America. So apparently, uh, this dish was reconstituted by the Albanians. Uh, basically, long story short, after the 90s, the Albanians uh, didn't really have any news, like any, any media company. So they, were, they had to consume um, basically foreign things, like soap operas, like TV shows, like media. So they got a lot of stuff from Italy, but they started watching a lot of things from Brazil or from Mexico. We call these telenovelas, you know, these kind of really dramatic things. Uh, you know, soap operas and stuff. So, uh, apparently they were eating tres leches in these, in these soap operas, and the chef from Albania reverse engineered it. So they, they, they call it tri leche, because that's probably what the name was. And yeah, it's exactly it. You have this kind of caramel top, you've got a, uh, a white cake soaked in, um, in milk. Mmm. Oh my God, it's so good. So, so, so good. And it's one of those cultural mishmashes that you only know if you know, and you would never know if you didn't ask. So, super, super delicious. This top is, it's nice. It's like a caramel, it's creamy. It's my, honestly, my favorite cake because I find cakes too dry, and this one is not dry at all. It's soaking with milk, so. 
absolutely delicious. If you come to basically the Balkans, anywhere that touches Albania, you have to get tri leche. Mmm. So good. So bad for you, but so good. So guys, that's a quick little tour of the Skopje Old Bazaar. What food you can find here. What beautiful food markets you can find here. I hope you guys learned something new. Hope you enjoy the food tour. We've got a few more videos coming from Macedonia. I have no idea where I'm going next. I'm gonna put a poll. It's gonna be either Serbia, Kosovo, or Ukraine. Probably all three. I don't know which order. So, uh, more coming from Tales from the Road soon. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Uh, all of that's important. Uh, if you're from another Balkan country and you think this is your food and not Macedonian food, uh, you can comment below, but I think like a lot of the food in the Balkans is shared and there's a shared culture and history here. And uh, you know, if you wanna argue about where meatballs come from in the comments, feel free to do so, but I don't feel bad about how I described it. I love my time here in Skopje and there's amazing things to find. Come to Macedonia the next time you can and we will see you in the next episode.